A while back, I decided to start a YouTube channel where I discussed obscure computer games I grew up with. People were mostly invested in the videos where I covered the old Spongebob games, so I started doing more Nickelodeon stuff. One of the most frequently requested things for me to cover was the Super Brawl series. I'll admit, I was a little intimidated by it. At a glance, there were so many and a lot of them looked far more complicated than I would have expected them to be. I played the first few when I was younger, but I wasn't super familiar with the series or the fan base surrounding it. The early to mid-2000s was my usual stomping ground on YouTube, so I would be heading into uncharted territory to cover this series from the 2010s. I made a video where I ran through all the games and gave a brief overview for each of them. Most of my videos at the time got around 500 to 1000 views, so I didn't expect it to blow up or anything, just another series to cover before we went on to the next game. Then I woke up one day and saw this. Well then, I'm not too good with numbers, but I think that's a little more than 500. So a few people suggested that I make more videos on the Super Brawl series, and it sounded like a good idea. Some of these are highly involved and require more attention, so I'd like to start off by covering the ones that started the series and we can work our way up. So let's break down this nostalgic Nickelodeon franchise. But if we're going to be covering the start of the Super Brawl series, it's important to mention one other thing. Even though Jingle Brawl was the first installment, the series actually begins with a completely different game. One that doesn't bear the Super Brawl title, nor was it made by any of the usual developers. It's called Smash Fest, developed by Sarbakin. Sarbakin is a highly reputable company and made countless Flash games. Seriously, if you went to the beach and counted every individual grain of sand, you'd eventually reach at least half a fraction of how many games they released. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration, but they made a lot. Even with the amount of games they put out, many of them were really good and are still held in high regard. We've covered numerous Sarbakin games on this channel, and they haven't disappointed us yet. So let's see what they cooked up for Smash Fest, the prelude to the Super Brawl series. Rather than being a typical fighting game, this is one where you try to knock your opponents off a platform so you can be the last one standing. The starting cast includes SpongeBob SquarePants, Timmy Turner from The Fairly Odd Parents, Otis from Back at the Barnyard, and Private from Penguins of Madagascar. Can we just take a moment of silence for Kowalski, the only penguin to never be playable in one of these fighting games? I am so sorry, Kowalski community. This was a simple game that came out a week before Jingle Brawl in 2009. In the story, the characters are fighting to succeed King Julian as king. I'm not sure why he's relinquishing his crown, but I guess he just can't move it, move it like he used to. He serves as the host and the only non-playable character, but if you look at the title screen, there's a little note at the bottom that gives us a code to unlock him in Jingle Brawl. So him being the final boss and a secret character in Jingle Brawl was kind of a callback to this game. Don't you love it when a small character in a prequel gets a bigger part later on? So each of the characters have their own stats. SpongeBob is a good middle ground character with good speed and a good special attack power, but not a very strong standard attack. Timmy has a good standard attack and speed, but not a very good special attack. Private is the fastest character, but his standard attack is terrible and his special move isn't much better. Otis is a beast, with both of his attacks being heavily destructive, but he's also the slowest one. It's a fine trade-off, because if you're too fast, you're more likely to just run over the edge. You have one arena where you run around the stage fighting each other. Now this is a hilarious display. Look at this ginormous cow and this tiny little penguin duking it out with some kid in a sponge. The more you hit someone, the more damage they take, which makes them easier to fling over the edge. Thankfully, you can jump back up if you fall off. Otis clobbers everyone and Private kinda sucks, but Timmy and Spongebob are fairly standard. Once someone's been ringed out three times, they're out of the match. For the special moves, Spongebob blows a bubble, Private slaps you with a fish, Otis hits you with a pitchfork, and Timmy swats you with a magic wand. You can also collect power-ups that'll make you invincible, faster, or stronger. Again, speed can be more of a curse than a blessing sometimes. This game is surprisingly hard, so it'll likely keep you playing despite its simplicity. I do like this little arena though, especially the screen that shows someone dead whenever they get ringed out. Otis is my favorite because you just destroy everyone. He might be just a little overpowered. If you move everyone together, you can hit them all at once. Private's fun, too, if you like zipping around at lightning speed. Watch this minuscule penguin send a gargantuan cow flying like it's nothing. But this isn't all there is to see. Over time, you unlock Patrick from Spongebob. His speed isn't great, but he's still faster than Otis. His attacks are also good, though not as strong as Otis. They really covered all bases with this cast. His special move is also similar to Spongebob's where he blows a bubble of destruction. 
Essentially, this is a simple platform fighter that you can try out as a decent time killer. There isn't much to it. So now let's move on to the big event. To celebrate the holiday season, the first iteration of Super Brawl came in the form of a Christmas special. While the game itself wasn't very Christmassy, the background music was an awesome take on Jingle Bells. This was developed by MP Game Studio, a company from Argentina that made many games for different cartoons. Back when they were active, they made some incredible stuff. As we can see, SpongeBob, Timmy, King Julian, and Otis successfully made it in, but they swapped Private for Rico. Maybe he died during the platform battle. Like with Private, Rico seems like a strange choice over Skipper, but I guess he was busy playing Block Party. Rico was always my favorite as a kid, so maybe he was a popular character. Or maybe the developer's favorite. Fanboy from Fanboy and Chum Chum also joined the cast. Back then, if you entered certain codes, you could also unlock Aang from Avatar and Danny Phantom from Danny Phantom. Both of those shows had ended by then, so it's nice to see them included along with the ongoing ones. Sadly, it's hard to find a version of this where the codes still work, but the first few games are more or less the same, so we'll still get a look at them. You start with tournament mode, but you have to unlock arcade and training mode. I'm not a big fan of this because it doesn't give you the chance to try out the characters and see which ones you like. Every character has a punch, a kick, a jump attack, and they all have different key combinations for their special move. This makes them all play a little more uniquely. So like in Smash Fest, Otis is a powerhouse. He can absolutely decimate whoever he's fighting. His special is also... uh... Okay, that's terrifying. A giant murderous cow walking on two feet that can shoot lasers from his udders. He's got to be the scariest character in Nickelodeon lore. Moves like this keep the enemy from getting too close because it serves as a sort of projectile. I should also mention that when he uses his jump attack, he thrusts his udders into the enemy. That's a little strange. Even though Otis is strong, I found a little tactic that can make basically any character work. If you back your enemy into a corner and smash both the punch and kick buttons, you can just key smash your way to victory. This really isn't the most complicated fighting game. Once again, SpongeBob is a good middle ground. He's dressed like Ryu from Street Fighter, which this took inspiration from. He's the only one who isn't in one of his usual outfits, but it's cool that he has his own design to associate with this series. Makes it stand out more. Fittingly, his special move is Ryu's trademark Hadouken. He's a lot of fun to play as. Fanboy has Chum Chum following him around, but he really just cheers you on. At least MP acknowledged they were inseparable. They were equally significant in the show, so you have to wonder if we'd be playing as Chum Chum if they decided to name it Chum Chum and Fanboy. Fanboy's special move is when he shoots his brain at the opponent. It's really strong if it lands. I found him tough to fight against, but not so much when I tried him out. The AI makes a better Fanboy main than I do. Now Timmy, who's dressed as his superhero persona Cleft, is probably the weakest in the game. He's always easy to beat no matter who I'm playing as, and his special move needs to be so specific that it almost isn't worth using. He asks Cosmo and Wanda to fire a spell at the opponent, but it only lands if the opponent is standing just the right distance away. Also, hey, he's using his fairies to help him win a competition. Isn't that against the rules? He's gonna lose his fairy godparents for the sake of winning Jingle Brawl. I hope it's worth it. Now, Rico is one tough cookie. He will slap you into oblivion with his fins. He also throws dynamite as his special move. This penguin is not someone you should mess with. He also has the best victory pose where he just shrugs in confusion. He's one of my favorites in this. So once you choose a character in tournament mode, you fight through the others in a random order until you reach King Julian. Just remember my button mashing tactic and you should be fine. King Julian will make it more challenging because he's limber and evasive. Like with Fanboy, he also has a partner character running around with Mort. For his special move, Mort will leap into combat and strike you. He's tough, but with enough persistence, you can defeat him and win the game. I should also mention there's a point system where you get a certain score based on how many noteworthy moves you land. So if going for a good score tickles your fancy, you can do it with this. I also have to mention the animation. This features a blend of 2D and 3D, matching the style of each individual show. 
There's a certain shade on the 2D characters that really fits the tone of this adventure. The backgrounds are also nice, taken from different locations throughout the shows. I like the penguins' base because the other penguins are cheering Rico on. Ah, good old Rico, always getting into a fight with someone. SpongeBob's stage is the most interesting because it's a little strange. Look at Sandy. You're in the Krusty Krab and a bunch of 2D fish are watching you, but SpongeBob and Squidward's 3D houses are covered in sand over there. It was probably just a stylistic choice. Even if the style isn't consistent, I do like the 2D-3D blend. It reminds me of the AWE games, which as we all know, I absolutely adore. So while this is a great concept, it's kind of a shame that a lot of it has to be unlocked. Thankfully, this isn't the full game. Four different versions of Super Brawl were released, but they were all more or less updates to the existing game. Let's check out Super Brawl, the successor that came out in 2010. This time, all modes and characters are available right away, which is a welcome improvement. The only one we have to unlock is Dr. Blowhole from the Penguins of Madagascar, who serves as the final boss in tournament mode. He was added to advertise his special episode, Dr. Blowhole's Revenge. We'll get to him in a moment, since we still have to talk about Danny and Aang. They're both really strong characters, and Danny has this move where he blasts you with some ghostly energy. He also has the coolest block where he goes into ghost form. Aang's special move is also brutal. He meditates and bombards you with flying rocks from a distance. But like in Jingle Brawl, my special tactic for winning still holds up. However, Dr. Blowhole is ridiculous to fight against. He can blast you with a laser from afar and swipe you with his tail at a speed that would make Sonic the Hedgehog jealous. You have to time your blocks correctly and move in at just the right time. Then you might manage to back him into a corner and beat him by spamming your attack button. He's easily the toughest fighter, and since you can't fight yourself in this, his final round is against King Julian. Strong as Julian is with Mord on his side, he's no match for this dolphin dictator. So now let's move on to Super Brawl Summer, which was essentially the summer update. We have a few new characters and stages with this. First off, we have the Mighty Bee herself, Bessie Higginbottom. While I've never seen much of the show, it's one I'm surprised people don't talk about more. There aren't a lot of female-led shows with Spongebob-styled cartoon humor. Either way, she's pretty tough. Her special move is especially destructive because she summons an army of bees that are nearly impossible to avoid. They speed by in a straight line across the screen, meaning the only way to dodge them is to nail a perfectly timed jump. I guess that's why they call it a bee line. The final boss in tournament mode is Patrick, finally making a return after being left behind in Smash Fest. He has a yellow beach towel that he whips at the enemy. It was white when he bought it. He can do some decent damage, which makes up for the fact that he moves very slowly and his jump leaves much to be desired. Bessie's bees can wipe the floor with him. I should also mention that Super Brawl added this jellyfish field stage where you can see a highway being built. This is a reference to the episode Spongebob's Last Stand, which aired around the time this came out. I also like the pier stage from Mighty Bee. I guess it's attached to the... Mighty Beach. Yeah, let's move on. Super Fall Brawl was the final update to what Jingle Brawl started. It added Sheen from Planet Sheen and a few Autumn stages. He was from some other show or something too, wasn't he? Hmm, I can't really remember. Oh yeah, it was that one AWE PC game, wasn't it? A groundbreaking performance, if I do say so myself. Hey, Jimmy, I threw a computer part into a small sewer inside the subway downtown. Gee, I bet you could have used that, huh? He acts as the final boss in tournament mode, but he was actually removed because players found him way too hard to fight. As you can see, I have to agree. Though I wish they just made him easier rather than took him out entirely. I also have to mention how big he is. He's almost as scary as Otis. This is an instance where the stylistic differences can be a little shocking. But it isn't too bad, so I don't hold it against the developers. So that brings us to the end of the first Super Brawl game. Super Fall Brawl is basically the entire thing, so if you want to revisit it, you can cover all bases by trying this one. It also has the best music. So now that we're done with the first selection of Super Brawl games, let's take a look at the sequel. Most people seem to agree that 2 and 3 are the best in the franchise. I have to agree, and they both have their strengths and weaknesses. We'll look at Super Brawl 3 in another video, but for now, let's see what Super Brawl 2 has to offer. Since these games were updated as they went, the casts weren't always complete right away. On release, these were the only characters we had. Seems a little random, doesn't it? SpongeBob, Sheen, Chum Chum, Kitty from Tough Puppy, Monkey from Monkey Quest, and Plankton from SpongeBob. 
I'm sure they knew what the full cast would be when they first started development, because this is a very strange selection. Monkey Quest wasn't actually a TV show, but an online game Nickelodeon used to run. It's actually kind of neat that they made use of their different properties rather than just sticking to TV shows. If you have it, go ahead and show it off. But the full cast is incredible. We have all the same characters from Super Fall Brawl along with a bunch of new ones. Apart from the ones I just mentioned, we have Sandy from Spongebob, who makes a great option because she's, you know, a karate expert. But there's also the wizard Kyle from Fanboy and Chum Chum, Dudley from Tough Puppy, and a regular Spongebob without the Ryu costume. Both are playable, with Ryu Bob being labeled as classic. Kind of ironic since his usual outfit is the older and more recognizable one. Skipper's also here, so I guess he finished up with his board game. Also, Jimmy Neutron is here. What show was he from again? God, I just can't remember the name. Before we get to the individual fighters, we have a few new modes to check out. In survival, you fight an onslaught of opponents that continue to jump in whenever you beat one. It's really hard, actually. I could never get past the second. But tag team mode is a lot of fun. You choose two fighters to fight another duo, then you have the option to switch back and forth between them. You try to knock out both of the enemies to win. So now let's check out the main game. We still have the 2D, 3D blend, but everything's a little darker and has that sweet fighting game aura. It takes a lot longer to bring down an opponent in this than it does in any of the ones before it. Fights can take up a decent amount of time. Also, all special moves are the same combination of keys now. I guess the players are different enough to have their own special merits now. Another new addition is the super special attack, which your character can enact after your super bar fills up over the course of the fight. All of the characters are fun to play as, and it's nice to see their unique movesets. I really like Kyle here. Regular Spongebob is also pretty tough. For his regular special move, he flies across the screen and sweeps his enemy with a kick. Gotta get those jumps just right to avoid it. His super move turns him into the amazing Mr. Absorbency and he slams into you. Plankton is neat because he's fighting by making use of a mind control device attached to Incidental 24. He was called Frank once. This allows him to cannonball into opponents for both of his moves. He's a fairly standard fighter. Sheen is still strong, but not to a broken extent. He's a lot smaller too, so I'm glad they fixed that. All of the existing characters retain their usual special moves, but have new super ones. Sheen blasts you with a rocket, and that's a little excessive, don't you think? Kitty's a pretty good fighter too. She shoots you for both of her moves. So does Chum Chum, but with a slushy. Fanboy X is his cheerleader character and vice versa, so I'm glad they kept that consistent. Chum Chum can take a good few hits, and for his special move, he makes it rain. Skipper has Rico's penguin slaps, but he can also throw Shuriken. But he's the most broken character in the whole thing. Look at this. Geez, settle down, Skipper. Don't you think that's enough? He must be angry at me for calling Penguins of Madagascar a forgotten show in my last video. Monkey's kinda weak, but he's got a nice tail swing and laser blast. Sandy's tough, as can be expected, and she uses her lasso in combat, along with a combination of some karate. Jimmy's cool, but look at him. Why does he look like he's perpetually on the verge of tears? Also, look at his victory pose. He looks so awkward. He has a laser of his own and uses his jetpack to zoom across the screen, so he's kind of formidable. Otis has a similar move, but he just kind of blasts across the screen. Now that's terrifying. A massive cow on his hind legs shooting lasers from his udders moving toward you faster than the speed of light. This is what nightmares are made of. Bessie's actually been nerfed a little. Her bees aren't quite as unavoidable this time, but they are stronger in her super move. Aang's just as tough as before, but he's kinda shiny. His super ain't that special, though. The dog in Butch Hartman's favorite shirt is alright, but he can swipe you with this giant bone. Fanboy's kinda weak, but his special move is easily spammable. He also empties his brain for his special attack. He's literally me whenever I take on an important task. Danny's still really fast and powerful, and Timmy's a little stronger this time, too. Oh god, his super move is so powerful it breaks the entire game. No wonder Cosmo was so afraid of Super Toilet. It's a universe-breaking level of terror. So much clogging. My favorite penguin's alright, but not too remarkable this time around. 
I like that his super move involves shooting something from his mouth because he did that a lot in the show. Surprised they didn't make use of it in the earlier games. Blowhole isn't quite as powerful this time around either, and his super move is the worst in the game. Just one quick and easily avoidable slam. Patrick's a lot faster and has a better jump than before, and his towel is still a lethal weapon. Now I really don't want to know why it's yellow. Classic Spongebob is even stronger than he used to be. You can decimate your enemies now. King Julian is a lot weaker than he used to be, but look how much taller he is than Jimmy. No wonder he's the king of lemurs. If you were a small rodent and something that size started giving you orders, you'd obey their every command. So overall, this is really good. The best installment in the series so far. I'm actually amazed by how much detail went into it. You wouldn't expect that from an online Flash game. My only major criticism is that Skipper is broken beyond belief. It took him this long to get in the game and this is how he fights? He must be angry about losing a block party match to the cast of iCarly or something. Now unfortunately, MP Game Studio shut down in 2011, and this meant they couldn't develop Super Brawl 3, so that task was given to Workin' Man, one of the most beloved development companies on the Nickelodeon website. While Super Brawl 2 is a strong candidate for my favorite in the series, 3 does have a lot of merits that are worth appreciating. Maybe it can snatch the title away when we take a closer look at it. For now, let's appreciate the effort MP Game Studio put into making some amazing fighting games that many of us fondly remember. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.